happens there. And then they go, eh, I can't move. Um, and they're, yeah, it's pretty gruesome. It's pretty gruesome, but in order to eat the meat of a tortoise, you can't actually kill them because they're obviously they were trapped. They're very well defended. You've got to kind of open, flip them open, flip them over, open them with a machete like a can of beans, and then you kill them, which is pretty gross. But I mean, it was undeniably a survival part of the expedition. Not that the whole thing was a survival experiment. It wasn't. It was an expedition, but that particular thing was. And we ate all the intestines, we flushed them, flushed them out in the river, and then we ate all of the organ meats, and then um, we cut up the meat and, and hung it and made tortoise jerky out of the rest of the animal, which we ate, uh, which I thoroughly recommend actually is delicious. Um, <clears throat> eventually we did a subsequent two days walk and we found a house that was prepared to sell us food, but it was quite an extraordinary part of the expedition because we weren't being bogged down by human problems. It was, it was the ex expedition that I wanted. It was, for example, this is a photo of Cho um, fishing for piranha, but again, apologies to those people who, who, who have fished loads for piranha, but you can't put the hook on the end of a nylon line because the piranha would just come in and take your hook and then you've got no hook. So you have to put this thing on called a wire leader, um, which is essentially just a bit of wire that stops the piranha biting the hook off the line, but we'd run out of leaders um, and so, for a couple of days we couldn't catch any fish and they were our main, that was our main source of fats and protein. And then Cho, Cho came up with this idea which was to daisy chain my sewing kit, my you know my little housewife if you've been in the military, together using my Leatherman and the fire to actually make a daisy chain wire leader which then worked in order to catch piranha and we carried on eating. Um, at the same time the GPS showed that it had no satellites on it and then I was like well either the GPS is broken or there's been a nuclear war and all the satellites have been taken out and it's like probably the former Ed for going into like fantasy land but you know you have these thoughts when you're disconnected from from the rest of the world um Brazilians have got these amazing one to 100,000 um maps of their entire country um but they wouldn't give them to us we were we were navigating off at this point a one to four million map of the top half of South America. So I think we were, we were moving less than a millimeter on the map a day, but trying to take compass bearings off it without a GPS. It was bonkers and, a, a, and, and somewhat reckless, but it, it was quite fun. Um, I did think, however, it was a bit too reckless. And this is an image, as I said, we've got this satellite internet link. It was about the size of a paperback book you find a fallen tree and then a corresponding hole in the jungle canopy point this thing up and you, we had the fastest internet that I ever experienced in any internet cafe in the whole of the Amazon in my rucksack. Um, I knew Michael Jackson was dead within two minutes of it being announced um, on the internet and somewhat amusingly my sister who lives in Thedingworth just over there or over there, I'm not really orientated, embarrassingly. <laughs> um, uh, she emailed me to, to uh, express condolences because I'd been a big Michael Jackson fan when I was growing up um, but I was I was fine um, <laughs> so why am I talking about this oh yeah um, we've ran out of money completely and so I, um, I basically used the MacBook computer we'd been filming the journey to cut a little um, video together and, and cut it to a Coldplay sound track to um, tug on people's heartstrings and then we, we linked a PayPal link to it to ask people to donate to the expedition. It was way before crowdsourcing or anything like that, but we just, and we'd only developed a following of maybe 400 people, but for me that was quite a lot of people at the time. Um, but the response was just utterly humbling, really overwhelming. We had um, kids in South Africa doing it in their pocket money, we had kids in England doing teddy tombolas where they all take each other's teddies home and gave me all the proceeds, which I felt a little bit guilty about. One chap in Hong Kong gave me £5,000 um, and emailed me the next day apologising that he hadn't given it earlier but he'd been unemployed. Um, it was it was one of the most humbling parts of the whole expedition, but yeah, over the course of about a month and a half, I think £42,000 came in, came in via basically people wanting the expedition to just continue. After six hours of walking, we've done 2.1 kilometres. It's an obvious thing, isn't it, walking through a forest like this, that if you let it get to you, it's going to be so much harder. And yet it is so difficult at times, keeping your sense of humour, because... Because deep down you don't find it very funny. It's not very funny. I uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho. Pensando. No, es que 
Yeah. No, some came on, babe. Huh? Some came on. Sorry, I'm a little jumpy. If it's came in here, I suspect that they are up to about 11 or 12 feet long. We were going to go and collect more fish out of the net, <laughs> but we're not anymore because we're scared. Isn't that right, Joe? Let's check. Oh, sorry. Cheese. <laughs> Cheese. I'm still washing. Oh. <laughs> right. Patience is going, and I get this sort of um, weird rising feeling of it's sort of a cross between. It's not panic, it's sort of claustrophobia, but it's a, it's a real unease real uneasy feeling and I just want to get out there's ants literally all over me mosquitoes all the time a sensation of just needing to have everything go away although I was with Cho Cho's from over a different culture there's the language difference and, and it isn't the same as having a lot of other guys around you with the banter and etc et and so and for me yeah that isolation made, meant that, that I did start to struggle I got very angry with Cho because um, he mislaid a bag that had all of the insect repellents in it and um, all of the talc in it, or talcum powder. All of us have got groins that have started to get rashes and infections between the legs and the testicles. Cho laughed and said, that's part of life, but as far as I'm concerned, that's not part of life. That's bad administration and it's unacceptable in the jungle. And so I was very, very, very annoyed. And that might sound a comical thing to get worried about when you're sitting in front of the TV at home, but I can assure you that not having any towel when your scrotum is rotting in the middle of the jungle is, is quite a serious thing. Cho's fucking me off no end. <laughs> I think because Joe and I became so close by the end of the expedition, he was almost like a brother. And I think in the same way that you can you can sound off verbally at uh, your family, I ended up snapping at, at Cho very unreasonably. That was tranquilo. It's good. When he calmed down, he'd say, it was my fault. I'm sorry. Just like brothers. Good morning, it's soon. It's Christmas Day, 2009, day 632 of the expedition. Oh yes, Joe's just come back with a big load of fish. Nice work, Joe. Okay, so we have got a nice Christmas meal. Woo! Oh yeah, little kid. Happy, happy Christmas. <laughs> His friendship with Cho is stronger than it's ever been.